Hello and welcome to another NS3 video. I haven't been making these videos because I've been busy with my own work. Uh, I get a lot of questions about uh, you want to maintain a list of neighbors that you update periodically. And so this is really a C++ concept. So you really need to, you really need to be good with C++ programming. But um, basically, if you understand how we can create our own cla uh, class of a, an application type, as I showed in previous examples, you could see those examples uh, in my other videos, then we'll, we're building on this. This is a, an application, and uh, it's um, an NS3 application, and it's our own. And basically what we do is we send uh, using wave device, we're just sending uh, a broadcast periodically and we just say that it's received. Um, for the record, this is what the scenario does. So let me run it, visualize, show you what happens. I have five nodes and they all move from left to right and these, I believe, uh, move faster. And so they are in the neighborhood, and then once they go out of range, they're no longer in range. So they get removed from the list of neighbors. All right, so um, you don't need to see that yet. All right, so how do we do that? First of all, I'm going to maintain informations about my neighbors. For this purpose, I create a struct, but really it doesn't have to be struct. You can have a C++ class, but this is for simplicity. So struct basically contains the Mac 48 address, so 48 bit uh, address. So basically it's the Mac address of the neighbor and a time of the last beacon you heard from that uh, node. And then after that, I'm just going to call this neighbor information. So, so it's just my own type diff struct. And then I will create a vector of this type I defined of neighbors. And guess what will happen? Every time I receive a packet from a node, I will register it. If the, if, if the MAC address is already there, I'm just going to update the last beacon. Now, the other concept is checking, periodic checking. So this is this happens by scheduling a call to yourself. So a function calls itself over and over every interval of time. And I do that with, update, uh, not update neighbors, I, I call update neighbors every time I receive a packet. And um, there's one called remove old neighbors. So this is a periodic check to see which one has last beacon exceeding certain amount. Now, this application, I explain what it does in another video, but I'm just gonna go to the changes I made to it. So wherever I receive a packet, not here, I actually did it in promiscuous Rx. So basically this, because it contains the Mac address, the Mac header, this is an application level, so it doesn't contain the Mac header. Anyway, so, I check for the Wi-Fi MAC header. Once I found one, I'm gonna extract the uh, source of uh, the source uh, MAC address and then call update neighbor. That's the change to this function. What update neighbor does, first assume that it's not there. Try to find the neighbor in this victor using an iterator or a loop with the index. So, if the neighbor's Mac equals this uh, incoming packet address, then I'll just update the last beacon to now, and then we break and it's found, so I don't do this part. If I don't find it in my list of neighbors, it means it's a new neighbor, so found will st stay false, which will, call, which will basically have this code get run, right? And so, I'm gonna create a new neighbor uh, neighbor information, which is my own struct. I'm just gonna call it new n. Set the MAC address to this incoming address and set the beacon to now, and then 
push it, push it, push this new neighbor to the list of neighbors. And it's just that simple. Now the periodic check. So remove old neighbors is a function towards the end. It calls itself every second. You can make it whatever you want and it doesn't take parameters. So I just pass the object, this object. If it takes parameters, I will pass the parameters after this. So, so it will be something like this and then whatever parameters I have. Okay. And so basically it calls itself again after one second, but it needs to be triggered first. So I do that in start application somewhere. Yeah. So this is my start application. I'm just gonna, you know, make a connection, uh, to the device, um, uh, uh, connect this callback so that I tra trace and, uh, the end, I just triggered the first call to remove old neighbors, and then it calls itself again and again and again. And what happened there? What happens is I'm checking if the last contact, so what's the last contact is the time now minus the beacon of that uh, neighbor. So if it exceeds a certain amount, let's say five seconds, I'm going to remove it from the list and that's it um, for uh, you know just to make it pretty I have this red code green code end code so every time I add because I'm gonna print a lot of things um, every time I add I'm gonna make it green and every time I remove I'm gonna make it red so you you put green code here end code there and whatever is between them will be in green or whatever color. All right, let's run this. So I'm going to run it enabling logging. So this is WAF, the, the command you run it normally. So I'm going to do NS log equal custom application equal info. All right. And uh, in my uh, driver, my main class, I'm setting the interval to 0.5 seconds. Uh, simulation time is 60 seconds. And when I'm done, I'm going to go over the, all the applications. So I'm going over all the nodes. I only have one application in each node. So application zero, I'm calling a function called print neighbors just to print the list of neighbors when we're done. All right, let's get this running and it will print a lot of things. All the receive packet, receive packet, receive packet. Now, and post simulation, it says that neighbor, uh, node zero has these two neighbors, and this is last contact. This is a nanosecond, and node one. So this is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So it's about fifty-eight milliseconds, is it? Because uh, yeah, uh, no, uh, this is the time at fifty-eight seconds. All right, so what happened here? Let me scroll back up. You can see a little red. So when the simulation started, node zero received a packet from uh, this MAC address and it adds it added it to the neighbors. The same packet was also picked up by node two and it added it to the list of neighbors. Node three also received the same packet and same thing with node four, pretty much everyone received it and logged it in their books. Node two received from zero four and everybody else. Same thing with three, uh, uh, the one from three is added here and here, node three and node four. And then we have node three adding neighbor with MAC address five, 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 five. Anyway, so simulation goes, node one adds, receives a packet from this uh, MAC address, it adds it and it gets picked up by other nodes as well. They are close together in the beginning. This is the three, because uh, we only had like two threes here. So we have four. So every one of these nodes now have four neighbors because we have five, nodes in our simulation and they're all within range. 
We go back, time goes by. Dun, ta, dun, ta, dun, ta, dun. Oh, wait, what happened? Node zero removed this guy, and so did no node two, and so did node four. They split a little bit after some time. Like this is 15 seconds. Yeah. All right. And so eventually the other nodes, node zero is adding neighbor zero four. So it must have been a mistake here. You shouldn't remove it. Or maybe you removed it, but then you heard from it again. It's a weak connection, but then they'll remove it eventually. Wait, did I skip something? Oh, keep going down. Now they remove five, remove one, remove one. Add five. As you can see, there is an adding and removing, probably because it's some packets get dropped because they get far. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what's going on. But here we could see node two, node three, uh, sorry, uh, all the nodes are removing some, some neighbors and so on. And then this guy removes node three. It's hard to visualize what's going on really because it's a lot going on. And Toward the end, node zero have only these two neighbors. Node one only have one neighbor. Uh, node two have two neighbors, node three. Yeah, so what we have visualization wise, we have three nodes moving far away and forming sort of a cluster in a way. So these move faster and eventually Let me make this faster. So eventually, this one will only have two neighbors, this one will only have two neighbors, this one will only have two neighbors. So zero, two, and four will have two neighbors. And uh, this one is one, and three will have only one neighbor. So if we look at it here, one only have one neighbor, and three only have one neighbor, and then zero have two neighbors. So this is really a C++ knowledge and you want to get good with C++ writing classes and structs and vectors because if you want to maintain a list of uh, nodes uh, within the vicinity, you need to know your vectors and you know define types to make your life easy. Of course, you can add more things here, you know, like last signal, uh, signal power or whatever receive signal whatever you want to do here you can also uh, agree on joining a cluster so you do this in here um, that's it about this video I hope it's useful I get asked a lot about this I posted this uh, file on my github I'm gonna update it with this new things and uh, post it again and I'll have the thing in the links so uh, yeah, thanks to everyone that subscribed to me. I got a lot of subscribers in the past two weeks and um, I'm very grateful. I hope you find what I put here useful. Thank you very much and um, stay safe, stay home and um, thank you. Bye-bye.